So I was fortunate enough to test 18 running shoes in 2022. Some great brands, some great shoes, some great styles, and they were all fantastic, but there are always those ones that just got away from me. What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Steam Runner here. Welcome back to another video. And these are the seven running shoes in 2022 that I wish I'd managed to test. So for you guys out there, this might be worth making a note of this list if you see these shoes come up on discount in the near future. And I'm sure some of them are already because these are the shoes that I wish I'd been able to test. They got rave reviews. I've either tested previous versions and not got around to the latest version or they're brand new shoes and I just missed the hype train on them. Either way, these are shoes that I wish I'd been able to test in 2022 and certainly ones that I've made a note of for 2023 in future versions. So if you're excited for today's video, guys, make sure you please give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and let's dive in to this list. And let's kick start with the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. Yep, the one in the three that I have not tested this year. Interestingly, because in previous years, I've tested one and two. With the Pro, I only tested the one and the three. In the Shift, I've only tested the three so at the moment in this recent set I've got the shift and the pro the speed is yet to be tested now this is the only one in the list that I still might get a chance to test or I will probably hopefully end up testing whether it's before the end of the year or into the new year I'm not sure but it is one I would love to get my hands on but I've definitely missed the hype train on this shoe for me when you guys got this shoe you said it was incredible a lot more stable and you felt it was fantastic for those longer miles exactly what I was using the Hyperion Tempo for so I am excited to hopefully at some point get my feet into these shoes but as of right now recording this this is not a shoe I've tested this year and this is definitely one that I've regretted not testing sooner and the second one that I'm really gutted not to have tested this year is the Hoka Mac 5 if you guys have followed the channel, you'll know my love for the Mac 4. In fact, I labeled that shoe the James Milner of the running shoe world in 2021 or 2022. Yeah, 2021. It was incredible. I loved it. It was nothing fancy. It was nothing crazy, but it got the job done. And I racked the miles up in that shoe. It was probably the best Hoka that I have ever tested. Soaking up those easy and moderate miles. Such a versatile shoe. And again, one I gravitated towards for most easy and moderate runs. It was sharing the miles there with the Nova Blast 2 I think at the time and it just did such a great job and it lasted the longest it ever had with any Hoka shoe that I had. A lot of Hoka shoes kind of the, the uh, midsole flattens out very quickly. The Mac 4 lasted a decent amount of time so the 5 was a solid update. A lot of you guys loved it. A lot of you guys said it was great. You love the new foam and again this is one that just passed me by. At the time I believe I was testing plenty of other shoes that fitted that bill and it's just not one that fitted into the rotation. And another year goes by where I haven't tested a Nike Invincible shoe. This time it was version 2 that was released earlier this year. Now I tested out the version 1 very quickly. Uh, Tim Gross very kindly lent me his version 1 pair. When we met up at a race he said try these out, have a run in them. And they felt crazy, crazy soft. They put the Nova Blast to shame as a lot of you guys have said. Super marshmallowy. A little bit unstable but I thought yeah I can imagine this is quite unstable but I could get used to this. The Invincible 2, a lot of you guys said the updates on that shoe were minimal but they were still good they hadn't taken anything away from what made it a great shoe in version one and hopefully the finer details that they fine-tuned in version two were really really good and of course we're expecting the invincible three next year we've seen pictures of it it looks great very similar to uh, what we've had before in the one and the two some of the sides shaved off because uh, the foam was obviously quite bulky in and around the back area obviously adding a bit of stability considering the fact that it is such a soft shoe so how it will fare with a bit of that foam removed who knows we'll We'll see but it's another shoe that I kind of really wish I had tested this year had got some really positive reviews in the shoe of the year video that I've just released a lot of you guys said it was a great shoe it's right up there for you guys and another one that's passed me by and coming in at number five is the Adidas Takumi Sen 8. Now, originally, they did not release my size in this shoe. But earlier this year, if you've seen my Adidas Adios, Adizero, Adizero, Adios Pro 3, whatever it is, video, you'll see that I announced in that video Adidas have really kindly opened up their sizes up to like 14, 14 and a half, which is great for us big foot runners. Exactly the opposite to what New Balance and Asics have done. So this year's Boston 11, Adios 7, uh, Pro 3, and a couple of others were opened up to my size. The, uh, the Takumi Sen 8 initially launched up to 12.5 but then was originally was later released in a different colorway in my size. When I produced my Streakfly videos earlier in the year you guys were like hey 
it's Takumi Sen all day long over the street fly. Now, you know how much I love my street fly, so it was very valuable feedback to hear from you guys how much you love the Takumi Sen 8. And of course, with the Takumi Sen 9 just around the corner and already released in the US, not in my size. I think it goes up to a US 13 over there, or a 13.5, which would be a 12.5 here. I'm not holding out much hope that the initial release of the 9 will be in my size, but fingers crossed later in the year, it will get a new colorway with our sizes in it or my bigger foot sizes. So with that one done, I was kind of reluctant to pay £175 for an older model, but you guys raved about it it is really one I wish I'd tested. And the New Balance More version 3 is another one that came out this year that again I really wanted to test. I believe I mentioned this last year leading into this year that it is one I wanted to grab. In fact New Balance have really not been tested a lot this year other than the 880 version 12. I kind of get put off by brands that aren't producing shoes in my size. I kind of love shoe, uh, the, obviously the training shoes that they produce but when they're not producing the super shoes that I would love to try and test, uh, try and buy and they don't do my size I kind of mentally I switch off from them a little bit it's what I did with ASICs ASICs have really come on leaps and bounds I love their training shoes and we're about to talk about one very shortly but uh, when they don't produce my racing shoe size that I can test kind of like their easy day their speed day shoes and their racing shoes it really is quite frustrating now this particular more v3 is in my size but again I think at the time I had the 880 version 12 I think I had the Puma Velocity Nitro I had another one in the in the mix as well when this one came out so it wasn't one that I needed to come in and fill any holes there because the easy miles were being racked up by like three shoes at the time but again it's another shoe that you guys have said throughout the year this is one you need to get one you need to test and of course with the more version four around the corner I might just get that one instead and Puma jumping into the mix here, or Puma as I should say, the DV8 Nitro Elite or the Elite version 2, either or, is now in our size, and uh, my size, I keep saying our size, in my size. It is a size 13, again, it originally didn't launch in it, but future colorways have come out with bigger sizes. This is one of the racing shoes that you guys just continually said all year this is a great shoe i know friends here that have grabbed it and said it is brilliant it's one of their favorite racing shoes they've done so much racing in it this year it's been really really good and they've actually moved away from the vaporfly to solely race in this shoe it's that good apparently again it's not one i tested i've had a bit of a hit and miss relationship with puma uh the velocity nitro 2 this year incredible the dv8 version one I did not like in the slightest and the Liberate was incredible so I've had three shoes in them two were great one I really didn't get on with at all now the Nitro Elite again rave reviews I've seen all the hype about it you guys love it and again it's one that I really wish I'd managed to get hold of and going back to the whole brand scenario in at number six is the Asics Magic Speed 2 where I said about them not producing my racing size uh, shoes the Magic Speed is a training partner to the Metaspeed Sky Plus and the Edge Plus and the Magic Speed 2 looks incredible and again a lot of you guys have said this is a great update from the original version I have the original version it is fantastic but it is on the firmer side I gather this version 2 is much better a little bit extra stack a little bit softer cushioning what more could you want from a speedier day training shoe it is still for me right a little bit on the pricey side I'm not averse to spending that sort of money but I have to be honest with you if I had that spare money right now this is probably between this and the Takumi Sen 8 uh, one of the two shoes that I would definitely go for right now. The Magic Speed 2 looks to be a great update as I said from the version 1 and it is one that I have been really eyeing up for a long time. With my speed day stuff I have been gravitating towards a lot of carbon plate shoes just cycling through those because I have a lot of them and I really have a bit of a hole in my armour at the moment for those longer rep speed day shoes with my second pair of Hyperion Tempos now pretty much bitten the dust. So this is one that I really wish I'd been able to test and unless it falls down to a massive discount I probably won't end up testing it but fingers crossed it does at some point and I can get my hands on a pair. And let's wrap this list up with the On Cloud Monster. This is a shoe that kind of propelled onto the forefront of my mind because they're not really a brand that I've ever considered trying before. Like Marmite, you either love them or hate them. I've never tried them, but you guys give me mixed feedback on this brand. And I'm gonna be honest with you, they're never a brand that's really intrigued me to try out their shoes until the On Cloud Monster came out. You guys and so many people absolutely raved about this shoe. And the amount of comments that I've seen, people saying, I've got 400 
500, 500, 600 miles out of these shoes. They're so durable, they last so long, they're great for my easy daily miles. You can even pick up the pace in them. They just cover such a wide range of bases and you just were gravitating towards them for so many runs. Means it's a massive step forward for on and fingers crossed they continue that trend into 2023. I did really consider grabbing a pair this year. Again, at the time I believe I was testing other shoes and I thought, right, I'm gonna make a note of this one and I will aim to put a budget in to get this one. I never end up doing it because more shoes came out and I ended up testing other ones instead. And again, that hype train has passed on the shoe. But it was great to see them make such big waves in the running shoe market earlier in the year. And fingers crossed they can produce something else next year that I might end up getting hold of. So there we go, those are the seven running shoes that I really wish I'd been able to test in 2022. And if anything, if you take anything from this video, please do just consider making a note of these shoes and consider grabbing them on discount. These are the ones that I've really heard so much positivity about, wish I'd been able to try. And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below if you've managed to get any of these shoes this year, if you managed to test them and what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear more feedback on them. And really, if you can build up the hype on some of them for me to consider future versions, that'd be great or if you've got some really good honest advice about some of them and saying actually mate they're not as good as you think they are then please do leave that in the comments below and I can park that shoe for another time so that's it from today guys I hope you enjoyed it and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below if you enjoyed it please give it a like share it with your friends subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and as always I'll see you in the next one until then